hydride reduction reactions for the carboxylic acids and carboxylic acid derivatives. Uh, we're going to go through four major reagents. We'll start with sodium borohydride. We'll then move on to lithium aluminum hydride, which will probably be the most important reagent. And then we'll couple, cover a couple specialty reagents. We'll cover uh, dibaw, diisobutyl aluminum hydride, as well as uh, lithium triterpbutoxy aluminum hydride as well. Now this lesson is part of my organic chemistry playlist. I'm releasing these lessons weekly throughout the school year, so if you want to be notified every time I post a new lesson, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification. All right, so in the last chapter, we learned that both sodium borohydride and lithium aluminum hydride uh, both reduced ketones and aldehyde. Ketones to secondary alcohols, aldehydes to primary alcohols, well, we're going to find out that uh, lithium aluminum hydride is going to do a whole lot more than sodium borohydride. So sodium borohydride is a lot less reactive than lithium aluminum hydride, and we alluded to that in the last chapter as well. And that boron-hydrogen bond is just not as polar and not as ionic as the aluminum hydrogen bond we see in LiAlH4. As a result, though, it's only going to react with the two most reactive carboxylic acid derivatives, the acid chlorides and the acid anhydrides. It's not going to react with esters or carboxylic acid. Uh, carboxylic acids or amides or nitriles or anything of the sort. Uh, quick reminder on how they react with aldehydes because we're going to reference that here in a little bit. So, but one of these boron hydrogen bonds, one of the hydrides essentially breaks off and then is going to come attack the carbonyl, push the electrons up and get us a primary alcohol here. So not only do we have one hydrogen attached, we'll now have a second hydrogen attached. We'll have an oxygen with a negative charge and this can happen in one of two ways. Either with sodium borohydride, you can actually use a solvent that's protic, like ethanol here, and that would just simply be the source of protons for protonating our product alcohol. Or you could do this in a sequence of two steps. First step, sodium borohydride and aprotic solvent, followed by an acid workup step. And then that acid workup step would be the source for that as well. So it can be done either way, and I'm showing it one way here. I'll show it another way in just a little bit. So but that's a reaction for the reduction of an aldehyde to a primary alcohol. And that's going to be important here because we're with most of our carboxylic acid derivatives, we're going to reduce them first to an aldehyde and then additionally reduce that aldehyde to a primary alcohol. So that'll be the second half of it, just like so. So with sodium borohydride, uh, again, it's only acid chlorides and acid anhydrides. Esters, carboxylic acids, amides, uh, nitriles, not going to work. Uh, and in this case, it's going to be nucleophilic substitution. Once again, we have a leaving group. And the only difference here is really the leaving group. But what we replace that leaving group with in both cases in our nucleophilic substitution reaction is just a hydrogen. And so initially, we'll form an aldehyde. But this is going to keep reacting. So, and your final product is going to be an alcohol. You'll add an additional H. So there's really two H's there. I drew them in up here. I'm not drawing them in down here. So, but can't stop at this intermediate. Your aldehyde is just intermediate. It's not your product, it's just intermediate. Your product is going to be the primary alcohol instead. It works exactly the same way with your anhydride. Only difference here is your leaving group. And so initially you're going to reduce that anhydride to an aldehyde and then further reduce it to a primary alcohol. Cool. So in summary, sodium borohydride, uh, we learned in the last chapter that it will reduce both ketones and aldehydes. And now we see it also will reduce uh, acid halides and anhydrides. And that is it. We'll see again that lithium aluminum hydride being more reactive is going to reduce a lot more functional groups. So now let's talk about lithium aluminum hydride, sometimes just abbreviated as LAH. Uh, in this case, we should realize again that lithium aluminum hydride is much more reactive, and you can't use lithium aluminum hydride with protic solvents. So you have to carry out these reactions in aprotic solvents, which is why it's going to require an acid workup step. So with sodium borohydride, we had the option. We could do it in aprotic solvents or in protic solvents. And again, when done in protic solvents, sodium borohydride did not need an acid workup step. Not such an option here again with, with LAH. Always going to need that second acid workup step. Now we'll start with acid chlorides and hydrides, carboxylic acids, esters, and, and as we just alluded to, uh, lithium aluminum hydride reacts pretty much with every carboxylic acid derivative in one way, shape, or form. So in the last chapter, again, we saw that it'll reduce ketones to secondary alcohols, aldehydes to primary alcohols. Well, in these first four functional groups here, the, uh, the first four most reactive carboxylic acid derivatives, the acid chloride, uh, the acid anhydride, the carboxylic acid, the ester. So every one of these is going to undergo first nucleophilic substitution. And you're just going to be replacing a different leaving group in every case with a hydrogen. So and it turns out mechanistically, the carboxylic acid would work just a little bit different, but eventually still uh, turning into an aldehyde here when you replace that with a hydrogen. So every single one of these first off 
going to get reduced to an aldehyde. But once again, lithium low hydride will react with aldehydes as well, further converting it into a primary alcohol. And so in every one of these cases, uh, every one of these is going to be reduced all the way to a primary alcohol. There's not a good way to stop it halfway when using lithium aluminum hydride. Now we'll have some specialty reagents, uh, reducing agents that we'll see at the end of this lesson, where there's a few of these, we can actually limit uh, them and have them stop at the aldehyde as the product. But with lithium aluminum hydride for all four of these, final result here is going to be a primary alcohol. So in this first case here, primary alcohol and hydride, same thing, a primary alcohol. Carboxylic acid, same thing. Primary alcohol, ester, same thing. Primary alcohol. Cool, so no difference in these four. A little difference, again, in the mechanism uh, for the carboxylic acid, but I'm not going to go super detailed into the mechanisms here. Uh, one, the first half, nucleophilic acyl substitution mechanism we've already covered in other uh, contexts and stuff like that, that's the same. Uh, and then the nucleophilic addition with the aldehyde we covered in the last chapter. So now the carboxylic acid one is a little bit different, but again, I'm not going to cover it because most of you in your undergraduate studies are not going to be on the hook for it. So not, uh, not the best use of time as a result. Cool. Now these four are the same, but we're going to see that for the amide and the nitrile, things are going to be a little bit different. They are not going to yield primary alcohols. So we look at the reaction with the amide here. So you can envision a hydride ion, or the equivalent of a hydride ion, coming and attacking uh, the carbonyl carbon, pushing the electrons up. So and instead of these coming right back down and kicking off the amide nitrogen, forming an aldehyde, kind of like we've done with uh, the rest of these, doing nucleophilic acyl substitution, so nitrogen's going to be like, hey, hey, well, slow down. Uh, you're a better leaving group oxygen than I am. How about you leave? And ultimately, that's actually the net result, is it's the oxygen that ultimately leaves here, being a better leaving group than nitrogen. And so we're not forming a primary alcohol in this one. When you reduce an amide with lithium aluminum hydride, you get the corresponding amine. So essentially just losing the oxygen, replacing it with two hydrogens. So similarly with the nitrile here. So once again, you'll have the equivalent of the uh, H minus ion attacking right here, pushing these electrons out to the nitrogen. So this nitrogen will end up bonding to aluminum. And again, I'm not going to cover the mechanism here uh, in detail, but we'll have another hydride come and attach. And then your acid workup step will protonate the outside nitrogen. And once again, you'll end up with the corresponding amine. Cool. So these are different. They're not producing primary alcohols now. They're producing amines instead. Now, one thing to note here with the reduction of the amide up here, don't confuse this with the Hoffman rearrangement, which we'll cover in chapter 22 with amines and stuff like that. The Hoffman rearrangement actually turns an amide into an amine as well, but it's one carbon shorter. You actually end up losing the entire carbonyl uh, with the Hoffman re rearrangement. So you not only lose the oxygen, you lose the carbon. But here, with just hydride reduction, you're just reducing the carbonyl to an alkyl group, no loss of carbon whatsoever. All right, we want to finish off this lesson with a couple of specialty hydride uh, reducing agents here. We've got lithium tritributoxy aluminum hydride and then diisobutyl aluminum hydride. And one thing to note, diisobutyl aluminum hydride, you might also see that sometimes written as dibol or dibol H. So you might see any of these kind of abbreviations. I've given common, one of the more common ones here, but you might see this as well. They're all the same thing. All right, so let's start with lithium tritributoxy aluminum hydride here. So uh, both of these are much less reactive than lithium aluminum hydride, which is going to give us some selectivity. So if we start with the two most reactive, the acid chlorides and the acid anhydrides, so your lithium tritributoxy aluminum hydride can selectively reduce those and stop at your corresponding aldehyde. Now the truth is if we did this reaction at room temperature, well then your aldehyde would continue to get reduced just like we did with lithium aluminum hydride and form a corresponding primary alcohol. So but at negative 78 degrees Celsius, super low temperatures, so it turns out the aldehyde is only going to react very very slowly and so once we produce the aldehyde, so if we kind of keep short reaction times, keep that temperature low, we can actually isolate that aldehyde in pretty good yields as our product. Now, if you want to do the corresponding similar reaction with an ester, that's when it's going to be appropriate to use dibar here. So in here, we've got a picture of dibar, or sort of anyways. So you got two isobutyl groups and aluminum bonded to hydrogen. So that's diisobutyl aluminum hydride. Uh, and in this case, it turns out the picture is not the most accurate thing because the truth is uh, it probably dimerizes and or trimerizes in solutions, probably not going to exist as a single monomer uh, in an attempt to get the aluminum's kind of quasi-filled octet, same, same way we saw borane doing like BH3 and things of that sort. So 
Uh, same kind of thing, so, but I uh, wanted you to at least see a picture in case you see this drawn out at some point. Um, but diacetylbutyl aluminum hydride, once again, way less reactive than lithium aluminum hydride. And we can selectively reduce our esters to just the aldehyde, again, preventing it from going all the way to the primary alcohol. And again, we've still got to do this at very low temperatures. At room temperature, this, this aldehyde would get reduced further to its primary uh, alcohol. Uh, but again, once a, again, a roast re at our reduced temperatures uh, and for short reaction times, we can produce uh, in pretty decent yields this corresponding aldehyde. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? Best thing you can do to make sure that other students get to see this lesson as well. If you're looking for the study guide that goes with the lesson, if you are looking for practice problems on carboxylic acids and acid derivatives, check out my premium course on chadsprep.com.